Tonight, we report on the drowning death of an Othello man and how new jobs are coming to Quincy. What's happening in sports, Bob? The Columbia Basin River Dogs go 3-1 and one in tournament play, and the Moses Lake 9U team takes the Desert Baseball Classic. Here's a peek at our Weather Center forecast. Hello everyone, I'm Chastelyn Rodriguez. We're noticing some disturbance along the north of us, but will it impact our area within the next few days? I will have all the details for you coming up soon. I'm Alan Troop and we have all this and much more on i 501 News. From the i 501 HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is i 501 News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is i 501 News and it starts now. Arturo Valdez Jr. drowned Friday night while fishing on Long Lake. The 31-year-old Othello man was fishing with family at the lake, which is west of Warden and north of Othello, along the Grant and Adams County's border. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, Valdez's younger brother was reportedly in the area and heard a splash, but could no longer see Valdez. Another group was fishing nearby and helped search for Valdez without success. Grant County Fire Districts 4 and 5 responded at about 6.45 p.m. with water rescue teams, but it was the Sheriff's Office diver that located Valdez in about 32 feet of water just below the area he reportedly fell into the lake. The Sheriff's Office stated nothing appeared to be criminal in nature. Sheriff Tom Jones said this was a very sad, tragic outcome for the Valdez family and the civilian and joint responders trying to get to Mr. Valdez in time. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the Valdez family for their heartbreaking loss. Alumni of Efreda High School came together last weekend to help celebrate the school's centennial. Reporter Vivian Huang has the details. It's been 100 years since Efreda High School's first graduating class received their diplomas. This weekend, nearly 1,500 people attended the high school's 100-year reunion. The EHS 100 Reunion Committee formed in 2012 to organize what would become a highly attended weekend. Reunion Chairwoman Beverly Mayer said the big turnout did not come as a surprise. Uh, we had, up front, we had over 1,300 pre-registered, but if you stand, stand at the gate this morning, it's just amazing the people that are now are registering for the event. So I would say 1,500 is probably uh, a good guess. I mean, it's going to be higher, I think. And uh, we're seeing uh, the people from the 50s, 60s, 70s, they're really uh, into it. But of course, over the years, they're used to going to reunions. And they're, used, they're all organized in their classes. And so consequently, we have heavy numbers in the, 40, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. The opening ceremony took place at Kiwanis Field, where alumni gathered to reminisce with fellow alumni, former teachers, and administration. For iFiber One News, this is Vivian Huang. Thank you, Vivian. Linden Ice is opening their first plant in eastern Washington at the Port of Quincy. The new facility will be creating ice, crushing it, and bagging it in a building leased from Columbia Coal Store. According to port officials, when the ice-making plant is running at full capacity, Linden Ice will be able to produce 210 tons per day and allow them to supply fresh ice to grocery and convenience stores in eastern Washington. The new operation is expected to create 9 to 12 full-time jobs. A questionable witness and the death of a victim led to charges being dropped against an Efreda man accused of theft. Prosecutors dismissed the theft in the first degree charge against James M. Smith, a 62-year-old man, after the primary witness failed to appear for a deposition. Prosecutors stated with an uncooperative witness and a dead victim, they weren't able to pursue charges against Smith. Smith's defense attorney, Garth Dano, said his client was trying to help an elderly man suffering from dementia. Dano argued the witness, who became the victim's new caregiver, convinced the victim Smith was stealing from him. Smith was accused of writing a series of checks and using the victim's credit card to purchase items for himself and his wife. Investigators claim Smith charged $13,600 to a credit card in 2009 and wrote about $5,000 in checks. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. 
This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be back after a short break.